All right, guys, I already got into another one already. So this is a 2006 Winnebago Journey. And I had a viewer contact me and asking about a delamination on their sidewall right here. Now, 2000 to, I don't know, 2007 journeys and horizons are gonna be kind of my favorite diesels because I think they have everything you want and nothing you don't need and they're a shorter base. But that's not why we're talking about this. So there's delamination, might be hard to see. It starts here and goes all the way to underneath the bedroom slide out. Now she's already paid another shop a considerable amount of money to get it fixed and they used uh, 3M Super 90 which is not something you can use on uh, laminated sidewalls whatsoever. It won't hold for anything. So the first thing I'm going to do before I get too deep into this is um, take everything apart. Now the nice thing about it is the sidewall ends right here at the slide out right up above the slide out and above that slide out right there so if we have to put a seam in it's going to be right here which would be an actual seam underneath the slide out but i know basically this area all the way to there is pretty loose it's not structural this is all just going to be cosmetic because unlike the roofs there is actually framing in here so most thing that concerns me is going to be i have to untuck the roof radius to get that uh, molding off and then separate the phylon from the foam without ripping it because if we rip the phylon that means this is a full body paint job it's going to have to be painted and that will substantially increase the price if you see all those colors let me get the slides ran out and we'll talk about it now this week has turned into something of a uh, really busy week for me so i'm not sure how much i can record i don't like recording other people's uh, coaches uh, but i did already have a pretty successful uh the lamination video uh, I'll put a link to it somewhere here. Uh, it'll be pretty much the same thing, but all over again. Let me get these slides out. Okay, with those slides out now, we can see what I'm talking about. Sidewall ends right there. It's pretty simple. And it ends right above up there with a little piece of molding, just like it does right on this side. Now, I don't know why it delaminated. Usually it's going to be a water issue. So that's some other concerning things. I have to make sure that I figure out why that was leaking too. But if we take a look at the roof radius, believe it or not, 2006, this roof looks like it's in really great shape. Even more surprising, this looks like the original uh, roof radius sealant and uh, it's still intact. It's not loose. I was really expecting to see it cracked and loose and it'd be a lot easier to take this off and I'm not able to do that. So those are concerning to me too. I've uh, really have advised her not to uh, do this because this isn't. This is all just going to be cosmetic. But she, it's really important to her, so I'm going to do my best to see if we can't make this work better. So uh, I don't know if you can see me. Let's see. Uh, I'm trying to see if you can't see the wall de deform. It's very loose there. And really loose right here. So next step is going to be take these compartment doors off, take the uh, belt line off, take this uh, slide up molding off, refrigerator door uh, vent off, that light, that window, and break the roof radius loose. So right here is that little piece of molding I was trying to point out from the ground. It's just usually glued on or double-sided taped on. That's double-sided tape. You see how effortless that was? So there's already a seam between uh, this sidewall and that sidewall. The manufacturers learned that uh, on this piece of sidewall this small, there is going to be flex driving down the road. And this sidewall is going to crack there anyway. So they just go ahead and make a seam so it has a relief cut so it doesn't crack. So it gives a flex point. So there's another one right above that slide out. And it's usually pretty common underneath the bedroom slides too. So if we have to add one, we'd have to add one right about here so it would at least look balanced out. I agree that it's not ideal, but I'm already a little concerned about what I'm seeing inside the refrigerator compartment. Let's, let's see. 
You see how <laughs> the entire sidewall is moving with the, uh, the vent trim. So I'm pretty confident the Luon, the paneling behind here, is going to be rotten. Let's see. Yeah, it's separated pretty good there. We'll lose those high tech methods. And they've already upgraded their refrigerator residential. I don't blame them on that. And I think it's fair to say uh, there's definitely a water leak. Now you can see the new blue on behind there. That's not a good sign. It feels like it's on there pretty well, but obviously this isn't on there at all. I'm concerned. I got concerns. All right, so the doors are off, so we get the belt line molding off. I uh, already showed how to do this on a Forza rebuild. Uh, if you have a question, I'll just put a link to the uh, descript to that video in the description. So that part's done, pretty straightforward. Winnebago, unlike the rest of the industry, uses a very strange modular side-out seal. It's not held on with double-sided tape like half the industry, or crimped on like the other half of the industry. It's actually pushed in with this aluminum trim and gets captured. So all I have to do is take this molding off on both sides. It'll make sense once I do that. I'm gonna pull this molding off. It's just like angle aluminum. There's nothing special about it. I mean, obviously it's Winnebago special. But the seal itself, you just pull out. Usually there's one screw holding it in at the bottom, but the aluminum fits down over the top of that and captures this modular seal from each side. So you can kind of see that little lip on there. The aluminum goes behind there. So it's pretty easy to do uh, slide out seals on a Winnebago with the modular seal. And now we can see Should you keep pulling, Chad? Can I see behind here? I would say it didn't stick very well, because, ooh, Super 90 is not what you're supposed to use on exterior uses like this. How far does it go up? Pretty far. There. There's like 10 cans of Super 90. <laughs> it's pretty expensive, yeah. It looks like it bonded to the uh, foam really well, though. I don't know. I'm a little concerned. But definitely, there was a water leak somewhere in here. So I just have that light, that molding, and that window to take off, and then uh, that top radius. And then I'll have a better idea what to do. Does Chad have a better idea yet? The last step, besides taking this window out, is going to be to untuck this roof. There's very few things that I like less than untucking a file on the roof because it's very springy. And if you uh, aren't careful, you'll rip it and it just rips all the way up. And that's not something I want to do. And I really didn't expect this roof to be quite much in this good a shape. <laughs> so what I'm going to have to do is... Uh, break that seal loose all the way down front to back because even though I only need let's see that section back to here loose I just can't pop out a tiny little section of the roof I have to do a big chunk of it or else we'll put too much tension on one little area so I have to run the knife down there and untuck this roof carefully probably use a putty knife and a hammer too it's always best to use a uh, sharp razor blade I'm pushing away from myself, guys. Alright, have to reposition. Now that's loose. I have to go the rest of the way and start to carefully untuck this. Alright, well, fix I got. Fix-all, James. The fix-all is what? More sealant? More silicone. So Chad's gonna clean that out and I'll try to clean this out. This is our scariest part. And then we can, uh, don't cut the roof. 
Try to figure something out. Yeah, something's stuck there, James. Yeah. All right, so I got my custom-made hook tool. The other end looks just like that. It's like a J-hook for doing siding. Winnebago approved. Yeah, it's a special tool. Yeah. You know, lubricate this so that uh, hopefully it doesn't want to grab onto itself. This is not something neither one of us are really looking forward to doing. Nope. So I lift up on that. You can kind of see the entire roof edge wants to come up. Well, I think it's loose. So at the bottom of this, it just looks like this J. Uh, so I'm hooked underneath that way I can pull up. You can see we're pulling the roof out. You can see this is pretty loose molding, so the screws are probably broken on that anyways. That might be part of the problem over here. But we don't want to break it, so it seems to be stuck pretty well, especially above the slide out where they put a whole bunch of sealant. So we're going to make a few more of these tools. That way we can slide them underneath and make sure we've got a good handle on things. Because we don't want to pull up in one section and put a lot of tension right here, because it will just tear, and it tears really fast. Who's that? Mr. Stevenson. Who's that? The at the oh, gotcha. The high tech scrap piece of aluminum. The high tech jet fighter. You gotta get, break the other side, James. What? You gotta break the other side. What other side? Or the metal. No, we don't. Oh. You want something to grab onto, or you're gonna hold on to your fingertips? <laughs> All right, there you go. Grab your hands. All right, so then this should theoretically just go down into it. Now when I pull up on it, I'm actually pulling up on the on the metal or the uh, phylon. Well, somehow the special tool worked. So there you go. We just made a little J hook. See, we uh, get that bin and get underneath it, and we could pull it out without putting a lot of undue strain on this edge. Now we can finally look underneath. Somebody used a lot of. Uh, foam insert so I didn't have to put so much sealing in I guess well, I know that screw head's broken at the end but it has to be loose. So now we just have to take these screws off and this molding will be out of the way and then we can finally get to the sidewall pulled back which was the whole purpose right Chad that's right all right there is Chad gets the rest of those screws out for this gutter true story those are broken that one's broken that one wasn't, and that one was. This end one was missing. So, get this thing loose. Out of the way. Well, you can see the broken screw there, right? Broken. We're stuck in the fabric here, so we might have to bow it out in the middle, you know? So we can pull it out of the back, this fabric here. Should be able to pull it out my way, right? Yeah, we'll put that for safekeeping up on the roof. And now we can finally get to the roof. You can see the broken screws. Well, I, I'd say it's safe to say that's where the water leak was. Where's that? Where, those screw, where the screws broke and that molding was loose? No. Well, that's... I don't know. I don't know what's good or bad. Chad, tell me, good or bad? It's all bad. It's all bad. Not it is good. all bad. Okay. You the prying device? Good. Yes. There you go. Hey, okay, cool. So I was able to get this on the other side of the molding there. And because uh, that's where the water leak was, this is definitely going to come off easily here. But uh, the rest of it, not so much. I'm definitely full of concerns and fears. Chad's going to alleviate those fears somehow. Yep. I don't know how. Well, I'm, said this back in. I'm scared. Be scared. <laughs> it's a good idea tucking that back in. So for those that haven't seen it before, because Winnebago just tucks their roof in, there's no screws holding it. 
there's the uh, channel it goes in. There's the uh, exposed awning rail and gutter. And that's where it gets tucked into right in here. So just ah, focus. Just in that channel. That's usually where uh, the sealant gives way and then it pops out. It's at least one spot where it can't break now. That's important because that's the part that we get blame on. It's the expensive part. Yes. I'm not saying I was terrified about this part, but this was one of the two things. The other things is ripping this wall off without tearing it. Chad said he's not worried, so I'm not Step worried. Number two. One thing at a time. All right, so I think we figured out why it didn't adhere very well, even though they used the wrong adhesive. So when they did the repair, they didn't do a very good repair. They left the old rotten stuff as an overlap onto the new stuff. So it creates a high point. And a little bit. And obviously they couldn't get the glue all the way up there because they yeah. didn't because they didn't want to do what we just did because they're smart and we're dumb it's all gonna come off yeah no way to save that but i think it's safe to say that's where the water leak was yeah right about there and follow it all the way down mm -hmm. wow all right well yeah. no reason to watch us try to peel this off miserably that's going to be a long boring video i'll try to show, tell you what we did do one of those 10 seconds. Oh, it's done now. It's done now. How did they think that just slapping a couple pieces on was going to fix anything? I don't know. I guess the good news is we did get it all off in one piece without tearing it. Yeah, you can see there's a water leak at the light, a water leak at that seam. Right Definitely there. a water leak at the slide right there. Water leak at the refrigerator, but the biggest one was at the seam right there where the gutter was loose. So the previous repair would have been that piece of paneling, that filler paneling, all the way across. They did their best, but they did overlap it right here, so this would have been a high point, so it would have never laid flat. Same with over point. here. That's foam. 
And of course, that never touched anything because again, high point, high point, nothing filling the gap right there. And then you can see right up there, the old stuff's overlapping it. So there's not gonna be any adhesion right there, right there, or right there. You know where it was loose. My last real concern is how far we can take it back here. Because it looks like it's rotten to about here. I would prefer not to go back any further. Pop and try to take it off. Correct. So I'll run through all the options with the owner and see what she would like to do. But overall, I'm pretty pleased with what we were able to do without damaging that sidewall because we don't have to do paint work. And that's the most important thing. Because right. there's a wall panel lane right there. Four colors. That's a lot of colors. <laughs> Intact sidewall. So it can be done. We're trying to save this one. Yeah, try to paint that with a new piece of Phylon. What do you think? $10,000? Maybe a little more. Maybe a little more. Yeah. That's true. It's just a lot of paint. All right. Call it a day. Two and a half full sheets. Of glue on. You got a tape measure? In my bag. So obviously, even though they repaired it, there's still a water leak persisting right there. So that's good to know. We still have to uh, fix the water leak, right, Chad? Yes. Otherwise, it'll be in the same boat again. It'll be the same problem again. And uh, we had our super high-tech method of just using a shovel as a big scraper. My floor scraper wouldn't fit in there. What's the bad news? Only good news. Under eight feet. So it's not eight feet tall. Fantastic. It does look bigger. Hmm. Very disconcerting here. I've heard of guys with the Super 90 on foam. Uh huh. Putting on like a super, super light. Yeah, you do a light layer glue. first and then then. And then your glue is essentially attaching yeah. to more glue. Right, yeah. Because it's not the glue that does it, it's the solvent that eats the foam. So if you do the light tack coat, then there's not enough solvent to eat. Oof. You figure someone that would know how to do that would know that that's not the right application for how to do I'm really surprised how well the. Uh, Foam held to the glue, or the uh, the wood. I think it takes more than you're you're thinking it will. I think so. Do you believe me? I don't believe me. You were a very unbelievable person. Did you know that? Um, there's nothing more frustrating when you think you're recording something to find out. And I didn't know you're recording something. What? Why not recording something? It did not. <laughs>